Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. There's something wrong and that is that the US Chamber of Commerce, which is a very important body, which is what all politicians listen to, because a lot of the members of the US Chamber of Commerce are donors to these Republican parties and of course, most importantly, because they represent companies that create jobs. The US Chamber of Commerce just warned against the 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 1.9 trillion dollar stimulus plan by president biden this is uh, this is something that the republicans are going to latch on to i'll give you all the information all the news in this video let's just jump right in before i do that please consider clicking the like button please subscribe please enable notifications it helps out the youtube algorithm what i do my specialty on this channel is i make it rain money check that out it's raining money i can make it rain money for you no jokes aside my goal is to give you the truth, honest information about the country, about the economy and about your money. And let's just jump right in. On your screen, you see the new headline of an article from CNN that reports that the US Chamber of Commerce warns that President Biden's $1.9 trillion stimulus package is not targeted enough. What the US Chamber of Commerce is saying, it needs to be much more targeted. It needs to go specifically to those who need help the most. Now, if you've been following my channel for a long time, I've been saying this from day one, I'm in favor of help for those who need it. According to the US Chamber of Commerce, this plan simply essentially makes it rain money for everyone instead of giving specific amounts of money to specific sectors of our economy, to specific individuals, recipients of stimulus checks and unemployment benefits in order to help those who need it the most. Here's a quote from Neil Bradley, who's the chief policy officer at the Chamber of Commerce. Neil said this, we need Congress to get the policy right with highly targeted aid for those that uh, those that are most in need. As currently drafted, the American Rescue Plan fails the test. Folks, this is, uh, this is a pretty, uh, this is pretty strong criticism of this massive plan, which is almost the same size of the CARES Act that was passed when, when this pandemic hit us. This is a major criticism from the US Chamber of Commerce that I believe the Democrats are going to be forced to look into even though they intend to pass this whole thing through budget reconciliation in the United States Senate. Now, Bradley, the representative from the US Chamber of Commerce, also warned that spending so much money in an untargeted way would not would not allow the, the US government, would not allow the country to have enough money left over for future spending on important things like infrastructure, the redevelopment of our roads and bridges, broadband internet, investments in artificial intelligence, investments in our overall infrastructure. And this is this is a major, major, major focus for the Biden administration. The Biden administration calls this the Build Back Better Agenda. Remember, the Build Back Better Agenda is intended to be a massive investment in our infrastructure. It's not going to result in more stimulus checks or more unemployment benefits, but the idea is it results in more jobs and it results in a growth of the economy and it prepares us for the future. So this essentially is what the Build Back Better agenda is. Now, another concern from the Chamber of Commerce is that there is no specific planning for infrastructure. In fact, a lot of Democrats have said that the $350 billion aid package for state and local government, maybe we should take $50 billion out of that and set it aside for broadband internet. So you can start to see the rumblings, not only from the US Chamber of Commerce and the major concerns from the Republicans, but also the Democrats in and among themselves are starting to argue about how money should be allocated. Now, here's something interesting. Senator Joe Manchin, the conservative Democrat from West Virginia, there he is. Hello, Senator Manchin, has actually said that not only is he not in support of the $15 an hour minimum wage, which, uh, you know, which is not going to happen. But he has also said that he wants the unemployment benefits to come down from $400 a week to $300 a week. Yep, that is actually, that is actually new reporting that emerged today about the Democrats arguing from within. And so this tells you how complex the Senate negotiations are going to be. Could we see some amendments in the Senate before the bill goes to the president for signature. Now, let's get back to Neil Bradley, the chief policy officer at the US Chamber of Commerce. He said one of his main concerns was that the personal savings rate has gone up. In other words, individuals now have higher savings. Individuals have started to pay off credit card debt. And what he said is if the personal savings rate has gone up, why are we giving so much stimulus to everybody? Again, this is the argument from Neil Bradley at the US Chamber of Commerce. And he said that economic reports have indicated that personal savings have gone up and most US states have not suffered a significant loss in tax revenue. I've actually done a detailed video on 
whether U.S. states have seen a decline in tax revenue or not. And I think you're going to be quite shocked when you see some of the results of that data. And overall, even though the stock market went through a lot of turbulence, the stock market seems to be doing just fine now. I have no doubt that it will go through more turbulence. But a lot of economists and a lot of people on Wall Street are saying that they expect the stock market to do very well. They expect strong economic recovery. In fact, Goldman Sachs has now said that the U.S. economy in 2021 will grow at the fastest pace since 1984. So basically, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is saying, hey, the economy is growing, you know, people are doing well. Yes, there are certain sectors of the economy that are not doing well. And therefore, the $1.9 trillion stimulus package should be targeted to them. It should be targeted to individuals in travel, leisure, entertainment, and hospitality. It should be targeted to the unemployed. It should be targeted to those who are long-term unemployed. It should be targeted to those who've lost their jobs permanently. It should be targeted towards specific sectors of our community, women have been impacted more. African Americans and Hispanic individuals have been impacted more. This doesn't this doesn't mean that others are not impacted. This simply means that some some sectors of our economy, some professions, some individuals have been disproportionately impacted. And this has a lot to do with race. This has a lot to do with gender, and this has a lot to do with education level. In fact, individuals who had a high school degree or less a high school degree or less, were likely to be three times more likely to be unemployed. They were three times more likely to be unemployed compared with individuals who had a high, who had a high school college degree or more, which means that individuals who are more educated have the opportunity, have the privilege, have the flexibility to be able to work remotely and work from home. And so what the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is saying is, hey, they don't need to be getting stimulus checks because if they're making sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year working from home, why are we sending them fourteen hundred dollar stimulus checks? And finally, Bradley wrote this: these facts are not a reason for inaction, but they are a reason to target aid where it is needed. The failure of Congress to heed the data and revise the American Rescue Plan means less money for other priorities, including infrastructure and education. So that's it, everyone. Let me know what you think of these comments from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, essentially criticizing the American Rescue Plan. And definitely check out the other video where I broke down the statewide income for states across the country in 2020 relative to 2019. If you thought that states have seen a financial disaster in 2020, I, I have some news for you. You're going to be in for a surprise. So definitely check out that video as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. As you know, my specialty is raining money. Check that out. It's raining money. Lots and lots of money raining money. I can tell you that Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia does not want to uh, does not want it to rain money in an untargeted fashion. And and the uh, and the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. There he is. What's up, Mitch? If he had a choice, he would check this out. This raining money. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Why is it gone? Oh, it's gone because of Mitch. Because, you know, if Mitch had his way, it wouldn't be raining money. It wouldn't be trickling money. If Mitch had his way, the money would disappear. Uh, I hope I hope that earns a like. I hope that earns a subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Please click the subscribe button. It helps out the YouTube algorithm. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Are you okay with that, Mitch? Mitch, you okay with that? I think he's okay with that. Uh, Mention, you okay with that? They're both okay with that. Please click the subscribe button. Thank you so much. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.